Oops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were trying to <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, I go. Has the Turing enrichment scheme slowed down your research? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, no, actually it has boosted somehow the way I was working back at the uni. I would say it has definitely helped me, definitely made me faster. It, the environment is research environment, come the uh, organizational like industry environment, which makes you more professional, more disciplined towards your work which is what many PhD students complain about. It doesn't slow down your research, but I guess you, ha you, have, to be, you have to be focused in, you know, ultimately you do have to hand in a PhD and you have to make decisions based on that. Yeah, sure. I can definitely relate to this again. <laughs> it's, I've, I've only, as a January starter, I've only been here for three weeks, more or less, and it's already, I can already feel the, sort of the research <laughs> boost. The, the this is very <laughs> much a research period, and I'm, part of it is obviously that I am teaching less and that I have fewer commitments towards my university, although I can also keep that up, but I, I, I have a much well. better balance between my own research yeah. and sort of external commitments here. It's great. Perfect, yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Do you have to be able to code? Ha, ha. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you have to be able to code. I mean, it probably helps, but it's really so dependent on what your project is. I think for a lot of people code. It probably helps if you do code or actually at least can understand programmatic thinking. The extent to which I know how to code is I can probably write a Python script that will not make my machine die horribly <laughs> or enter an endless loop. Probably. I am a classicist. I am entirely self-taught when it comes to coding. I've put a lot of effort into this. I will at some point write some of my own code for my PhD. I'm working on this. And one of the reasons to be here is so that I can get proper support. So no, you do not have to know how to code. I am pretty sure it helps. Like I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not going to pretend that this makes my life easy. It doesn't. But it's definitely possible to be here with a background that is not a traditional computer science. There's lots of projects that don't actually inc include hard programming, so I think um, that's not necessarily a problem. Do you still have a supervisor? Are they lost? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I do have a supervisor, uh, an online supervisor, I can say now. <laughs> yeah, we do have meetings on Skype more regularly than not, but he's again a Turing fellow, so he visits uh, the Turing every month. And we have physical meetings as well. I wouldn't say that not being physically with him had be, had any hindrance on my research. She was entirely on board with the Turin idea. Sure. And she's going to be on leave for these six months while I'm here. So oh, that okay. works very well in terms of <laughs> us both not being in Oxford, but at the sure. same time being in touch and visiting each other. So mm -hmm. that's a nice arrangement. Yeah, okay. it's a very nice arrangement. Sure.